everybody, and welcome to session seven and eight of our microeconomics class. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit more about indifference curves, and then we will talk about the main topic, which is firms. Um, in the very first session, we mentioned that firms are kind of the main actor inside an economy, besides people, um, but firms are the things that take inputs and, and create them into outputs. Um, and so we'll talk about how firms are managed and why that actually matters for public policy and for public administration and how you can apply some of the lessons to, of firms to nonprofits and to government organizations and, and how to um, help employees um, or manage employees better. And so we'll be able to apply some economic principles to, um, to actual management and organizational behavior. So it should be fun. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the slides for today. Um, you can follow along on the website. Um, so we're going to cover a few topics. Um, first, we're going to talk briefly about this idea of income and substitution effects, which actually has nothing to do with um, firms. Um, this is a continuation of the idea of indifference curves and budget lines, um, because some of you have been emailing me and saying that, like, why do we care about these indifference curves when they're just fake. Um, they're just made up numbers. There's no way you can actually measure somebody's preferences using X and Y with just two goods. Um, we consume way more than two goods in our lives. Um, it's not just like waffles and calzones. We're eating lots of things. We're buying lots of things. We're spending our times on lot, time on lots of things. Um, and so why do we even care about these fake numbers? Um, and what, how is this even related to policy? And so with this income and substitution effect uh, section, we'll talk about how this is related to public policy and why we should care um, when setting policy um, and why we should think about um, how people might respond to changes in prices um, and how they're going to shift their behavior around. So it is, it is important and you'll see that after today. Um, then we'll talk about firms, which is the main topic for today. Um, and how they're structured, why they exist, what functions they play in an economy. Um, then we'll talk about this, this core idea of, of microeconomics, this idea of asymmetric information, which is actually one of the first um, market failures that we're going to be talking about um, during this uh, course. Um, and so you, you've watched a few videos from the uh, Marginal Revolution um, series about asymmetric information, and we'll talk more in detail about this. Um, but the reason this is important is because it has managerial implications in how you um, encourage employees to work. Um, and this was the gist of the core reading or the ESPP reading that you had for today. Um, this idea, like the relationship between owners, managers, and employers or employees, um, how you can get um, employees and managers to fall in line with the vision of, of the owner um, or of the board of directors or whoever is setting the main strategy, and how you can get all of these different preferences in line with each other so that the organization is effective um, using economic principles and using game theory. Um, that was um, kind of the math and the, and the logic behind the model that you saw in the ESPP reading was all based on game theory. Um, we're not going to spend lots of time kind of reviewing all of the moving parts in the graphs. That's far less important. I don't care if you can recreate that or anything like that, as long as you understand kind of the core principle behind um, encouraging people to um, work. Um, and that's, that's the main thing that we're going to be talking about today. So far less math than we've had in previous sessions, uh, mostly conceptual, um, and it should be fun. So let's go ahead and get started.